Hi and welcome back to the Night Hacking interviews and we have a new guest, Hari, Hadi Hariri yep. from JetBrains, Correct. which you probably know uh, because of the awesome IDE, IntelliJ. So I think you're a little bit involved with, with that as well, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, th I mean, we're more than IntelliJ, but yeah, people in the Java world know them, know us mostly for IntelliJ right. and Kotlin, now, right? Obviously, and Kotlin is one topic that you're talking about here at Uridev. Yes. So I'm especially interested in in that topic of of Ktor. Yes. Um, of the enterprise framework. Well, it's not an enterprise framework. It's more like a Ktor is a framework for con creating connected systems. Mm -hmm. Um, or as I like to say, you know, microservices backed with blockchain because that sounds okay. way better than just saying connected <laughs> it systems. It sounds way cooler. No, it's it's just definitely like, a you know, high, I high need to get into this, you know. <laughs> so, so, it's, um, so yeah, so it's like a multi-platform framework that targets, because Kotlin, if, if you're not familiar, Kotlin can right. target multiple platforms, mm -hmm. JVM, uh, native, JavaScript, and Ktor is that kind of the framework that allows you to do server-side and client-side connected systems. So we have, the main thing that we have right now is uh, client-side libraries for HTTP, socket mm -hmm. communications, uh, and then server-side we have like our own uh, framework, web framework. Mm -hmm. um, so something equivalent would be in the Java space, I guess a little bit, um, I wouldn't say Spring because the Spring mm. is a little bit more more integrated, like covers yeah, it's more got a lot just more you know, yeah. Side, I guess. Uh, but there's a I think it, what is it called Rat Pack or something like that? Mm -hmm. Is there is there a server side framework and and it's called Rat Pack or something like that? Uh, but if you're familiar with other technologies such as Sinatra from Ruby, mm -hmm. so Ktor actually. Kato was kind of inspired by two frameworks. One of them was called Wasabi, which is something I wrote, mm -hmm. which in turn was inspired by uh, ExpressJS, which in turn was inspired <laughs> by Sinatra, which and then if we can yeah, stop there. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, so yeah, so it's kind of like like a lightweight framework for creating HTTP endpoints and mm -hmm. socket endpoints. Mm -hmm. And what was the main motivation to to write it? Just to have something that covers a little bit more than you know your typical server size enterprise Java framework, or well, I think that there was a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, back when we started Kotlin, someone developed a, a framework which was kind of simulating Ruby on Rails mm -hmm. uh, for Kotlin. But Ruby, but that framework uh, it was called Kara. That framework kind of brought in a view model. It brought in the whole aspect of the Ruby on Rails kind of approach to things. Mm -hmm. And I started this thing called Wasabi because I'd been doing Node.js. And Node.js was more about the back end. It wasn't so much about the views and mm -hmm. things. It was just, here's how you can right. create a back end. Um, and then one of my colleagues said, hey, you know, I'm going to start experimenting a little bit more with this and, and f get a feel for like how could we define routing in Kotlin because Kotlin is very strongly uh, and a strong enabler of uh, DSLs. Mm -hmm. right. So we were like, how could we experiment with this? So it was kind of experimentation. It was kind of also um, being inspired a little bit by the work I was doing. Mm -hmm. And then it also felt like, okay, in Kotlin we have coroutines. Right, right. Uh, which is a way of doing asynchronous non-blocking programming. And we said, we need to really leverage the whole coroutine stuff. So we built this basically from the ground up using Kotlin. Right. Uh, so under the covers, it uses different uh, transport mechanisms and, and different types. So, so you can use like server containers, you can mm -hmm. use Netty. Oh, okay. uh, so whatever you want under, underneath, you can use. Uh, but then from that point up, it's mm -hmm. basically built um, Take into account coroutines and purely in Kotlin. Right, and to use the full capabilities of the language Kotlin, gives yeah. you, right? Like uh, other than just uh, doing Spring with Kotlin or Java Enterprise exactly. with Kotlin, then, yeah. you know, okay. That's and, it, and again, it's a little bit more lightweight. Like, yeah. you know, um, like the, the startup time is instant. You mm -hmm. know, like since the time you hit run to the time it compiles and, and starts up the server is a matter of seconds, Okay. right? So it's very, very lightweight. It doesn't have all of the complexities that some of these other frameworks have. Right. So it, it supports, I guess, like just the minimum that you would need, like HTTP plus. Yeah, I mean, it supports, I mean, minimum. It supports authentication, course headers, uh, you know, the basic things that you get when you're trying to do server-side HTTP endpoints right. or REST endpoints. Right. Uh, 
Does it have support for transactions or like JDBC database integration? Not directly. So, uh -huh. you know, that is kind of like more we fall into the Spring Boot area, right? right? Because Spring Boot has kind of, you know, that pattern where you can just download some module and then you place an attribute right. and you've got your REST controller right. with CRUD, which I don't agree with, by the way. <laughs> REST isn't about CRUD, but anyway. Um, so here we don't have that out of the box, but it's completely extensible. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that distinguishes KTOR is that every single thing that you have, every functionality, every feature is built as what we call an actual feature. Mm -hmm. And the feature is kind of like if you want encryption, that's called a feature. And then a feature can be inserted anywhere during the whole uh, request response pipeline. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's say, for example, in a typical scenario, if you have compression, you would place that after you process the response before right. the response goes okay. back to the client. That is a feature. But even the routing itself is a feature. Mm -hmm. So everything is pluggable. So if you want to create, like, for example, something that allows you to add an annotation on a class and, and create a JDB, JDBC mm, um, exactly. CRUD right. controller, it would basically be implementing okay. a feature. So anything that happens between that res yeah, the request response that, processing. Yeah. Okay. And we come with, I mean, it comes with a whole bunch of features out right. of the box. Right, that would be the next question, yeah. like how much it like comes with? Quite so a bit, yeah. I mean, I think we've that. got like 20, 20 features or something like that, which, mm -hmm. you know, is it between encryption, content negotiation, uh, content encoding. So for example, you know, you could just do return of a data class, which is, uh, you know, for people mm -hmm. familiar with Kotlin, uh, yeah. data classes. Like mapping uh, or, you know, yeah. JSON so you could just return a data class and it will automatically create the JSON serialization mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do any of those mm -hmm. things manually. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to cover then ultimately, you know, the whole or most of the demands that an enterprise or server-side application would need, or is it mostly done for, you know, just the integration within um, request response and then, you know, inside the business logic you would use something else? I think I think it can cover all scenarios. I mean, it depends on what you what you define as enterprise, but you know, mm -hmm. we have not only at JetBrains, I mean, we're using KTOR extensively, um, including for a new product, which we haven't announced yet, uh, which obviously has server-side HTTP. Uh, but, you know, people are using KTOR uh, mm -hmm. for any type of application, from your simple, um, you know, homemade, homegrown... Hello World runs on... Yeah, line of business to, yeah. to something extremely mm -hmm. complex. Okay. Yeah. Sounds very cool. So, um, one more question. What is the, uh, the name? Where does the name come from? Oh, I, I actually don't know where the name. I think we were talking with because Ilya Rizhenkov uh, is one of the one of the main guys that, that started working on this. Um, I mean, a K, I it, guess it was like Colin um, construction or something okay, like that. It was like a so combination. It, it sounded of, to yeah. kind of like constructor. Yeah, to me constructor and, yeah. and something like that. It was kind of like constructing things together, kind okay, of thing. Okay, cool. I like that. Uh, just to build something. Yeah. Up, I guess. Yeah. All right. Very nice. So, so what is your um, main role for? I mean, not only that uh, project, but in general at JetBrains. I think you're um, developer relations head of the relo yeah, relations. Yeah, like the this? head of developer advocacy. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, amongst my, apart from doing developer advocacy myself, um, I also quote unquote manage a team. Mm -hmm. Uh, of developer advocates um, across a multitude of products, uh, and then um, I also do a bunch of other things. Like we we've re re recently released um, a new plugin for IntelliJ Idea, mm -hmm. which is called Package Search. Um, okay. And Package Search is I don't know like you're a Java yeah. Java person, yeah. right? So normally when you're like okay, I want to use uh, I want to use an HTTP library. Right. What is the procedure? Let me go and go to Google. Google might take me to Stack Overflow. What's the latest one? Let me look at it on GitHub, find it, then go to Maven, then copy and paste. Right. That's always what I do, search.maven.org, right? Yes. You just see what is the latest version yeah, and get exactly. the dependency. Yeah. So, so what package search does is that from inside IntelliJ IDEA, you can type like HTTP, and then it will show you like all of the packages available. It will show you, okay. um, you know, the GitHub source code, uh, the number of stars, the number of forks, the number of questions on Stack Overflow. So it provides you all of this information that then okay. you can sort on and you can look at, and then you can just click on it and it will install it 
for you as well. Wow. Uh, so that's something that we've been working on. Um, I, I'm managing that team as well. Okay, this sounds very interesting. So from a user experience, how does that work? I mean, if I type HTTP, then I get you know millions or thousands of. Yeah. So we have right? different. Right now, it's basically a, a, a simple search, but we're we're adding query su support as well. So you can say, for example, you know, give me HTTP that is includes, uh, includes X, X, Y, and Z, okay. and um, and also that also serves us for Kotlin multi-platform because Kotlin, as right. it's multi-platform, what we also provide is like, for example, if you search for a library, it will have tags and saying, yeah, this is a multi-platform library and it targets these different platforms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we've, it, it consists of, we call it package search right now. We recently opened the EAP program, which is early access program. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, so we've got the server side, which is doing all of the indexing, mm -hmm. and then you've got the plugin for the for IntelliJ idea, and oh. then there's going to be a web interface for it as well. Yeah, I will definitely try that out and see like how well that you know how well it works works that especially in the enterprise thing because yeah you're right you have to do like a lot of like opinionated things you know get the dependency but the right one and if you're in yeah. EE you know we want yeah. to get the I don't know spec dependency or things like that. Yeah, and and the direction that we're moving is obviously now. Since we now have uh, information about the dependencies, we may be able to say, like, you know, do not upgrade this because it may right. have a dip an issue with this version. You right. can do, you know, right now, I mean, you can say update all, and it will update all of your packages to the latest versions. Uh, right. So, and I think the killer feature of that could be to, you know, do all of that connection, right? If you search something on, Git, uh, on, you know, like Maven, um, um, what's that, Maven Central, and uh, have the connection with GitHub, and then, for example, say, okay, here are the docs, by the way, or this is how you that's, use it, right? That's and then, actually you know, things that we're including. Uh, combine yeah. that. That, yeah. that is pretty. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So, like, you'll be able to access the README, right? Uh, and 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 even better is kind of like. Once we start to use it, I mean, you're familiar with the bomb, the bill of materials, yeah. right? The bomb files. Right. So not only that, but if we start to get heuristics of like, okay, someone that searched for this also is using this package or whatever, right. we're going to start to say, oh, you're using Ktor. Well, normally people that use Ktor also <laughs> use Ktor authentication, yeah. which is good because it gives you that like discoverability. Recommendation. <laughs> yes. People who purchase this library <laughs> also <laughs> purchase that one. <laughs> exactly. I, like I know. It's a, it's, a, it's a very long and twisted road right. that, down that path. Uh, but it, it, is, it is also helpful, right? Because people uh, sometimes... Yeah aren't aware of the different features that are available. Right, right. And especially to have that uh, connection then to here is, by the way, how he uses, these are some examples. Because, yeah. you know, this is always what you end up Googling or, you know, step o stack overflowing yourself yeah. then as the next step. So this is pretty cool if yeah. that can be. A and the thing is that we want to try and remain neutral there because, like, I'm not, I'm not a person that judges whether I should use a library by the number of stars or forks. Yeah, yeah. I know there yeah. are people that yeah. do. Right, so we're trying to include as much information as possible because, like for example, a lot of times people, you know, want to have something that has a lot of Q and A on 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 places like Stack Overflow, so they know that they could get some support, right? Right. Something that is popular, uh, and then you know, from this we can move on to, for example, things like, okay, you've downloaded this library which is a uh, you know uh, MIT license and that's okay and it's compatible with Apache right. but maybe this other one might not be right. so there's a world of possibilities that we can explore there is, is there something that you can already say that, for example, library maintainers might do in order to you know simplify that or it's, it's almost like SEO, right? Yeah. If you say so one of the premises of this was that we didn't want to have library authors have to add additional metadata because right. well because that won't happen because that quickly, yeah exactly right? you're going to end up with a with a very empty database yep. so we first and foremost said let's let's look at what there is let's index what there is let's try and extract as much metadata yep. as we can automatically yep. the next step yes i think that we can reach a point that if this becomes successful hopefully we can start to say to authors like okay if you include this additional data in your packages whether it's in your palm file or right. whatever we can display this and then this gives the end user more information, mm -hmm. right? More things to to evaluate your product. Right. Sounds very interesting. Very nice. Um, so that is already available. That's already an early access program. Yes. And then just early access program. Search for a package. Yeah. Just if you if you have the IntelliJ idea, um, and it works for Community Edition, also on Android Studio, just uh, search for package search mm -hmm. as the plugin, and then it'll install it. Awesome. And we support uh, right now. We support Maven and Gradle. Mm -hmm. We don't support complex scenarios of of Gradle. Uh, but we're working on that mm -hmm. so that if you like have you know scripts and uh, version oh, numbers okay, external and, and stuff like that, you'll be able to do that, that okay, as well. Interesting. 
Wow, very, very Yeah, cool. Gradle is not something easy to parse. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> it is not. Well, com complexity, right, with great power. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. With great power, you can just use Maven. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree. Awesome. Um, yeah, anything else that you would like to share? Maybe some advice or some, some closing statement advice for our listeners? Yeah, just try things out. Um, you know, I, I always people say, kind of say to me, like, why should I use Kotlin or why should I use IntelliJ IDEA? I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what, just try it out. Just try it out. It might work for you. It might not. But right. you're the best judge to to try things. Don't don't be close-minded. And and mm. the same thing goes for languages. You know, recently I, someone asked me that like, um, do you recommend that people really f strongly learn one language mm -hmm. as opposed to you know become an expert in that language? I'm like, no. You need to learn multiple languages. You need to think differently. You need mm. to have different paradigms. So try things out for yourself. Don't just listen to me. Although I do give good advice. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I like that. A very good statement. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thank um, you. For the interview and for everybody watching. Well, thanks for watching. Bye.